So once again, welcome cohort 2021 participants. And thank you all for being here today. For those that just joined us, as you log in today, if you haven't already, we ask that you please enter your name, title, as well as your organization into the chat box if you haven't already, as this will help us ensure accurate attendance. In the chat box, you'll also see four attachments regarding the revenue cycle and position practice management assessments, which you'll hear us refer to if you haven't already as the RCM PPM. The attachments that you're gonna, uh, you're gonna see include the data request, the interview schedule, the work plan and timeline, as well as a PDF of today's presentation. My name is Shannon Sari, and I'm on the consultation team as the team lead. And on the call with me from the center, we have my colleagues, Ms. Latrell Davis, Ms. Denise Tackett, Mr. Nick McRae, and Ms. Tabitha Stone. Next slide, please. The National Rural Health Resource Center, as once again, you'll hear us refer to as the center, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving health in rural communities. The center does provide technical assistance, tools, and resources to support rural providers in the five core areas that you see listed on the screen. Next slide, please. The Delta Region Community Health Systems Development Program is supported through a partnership between the Delta Regional Authority and the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy. Next slide, please. So to start us off, I'd like to quickly orient you to our agenda today. The purpose of this call is for you to meet the consultation team Forvis consultants, review the revenue cycle and position practice management process, and answer any questions you may have regarding the consultations. Next slide, please. The purpose of the revenue cycle and position practice management assessments are to identify performance improvement opportunities for your organization. The goal is really to assist leaders with improving processes that result in increased operational efficiencies, as well as enhances reimbursement. The consultation services evaluate areas that directly affect the operational and financial management of your organization, as well as the impact with clinic operations, provider productivity, as well as profitability. In addition, baseline measures are established for key performance indicators to support your organization with ongoing performance improvements. More importantly, coaching is provided through action planning sessions to build internal capacity to adopt best practices and implement action items. Next slide, please. So really what this slide is displaying is it's just a snapshot of the revenue cycle and position practice work plan. The work plan is designed as a guide to step teams through the project for successful completion of the assessment. It also outlines key activities required by your team and includes expected dates. The estimated time column helps to explain what is required so that your organization can plan accordingly. Each organization will receive a work plan and it will be updated to include your organization's specific dates once they are identified. Please share the work plan with your team to really build that awareness of the project and prepare them for next steps. Next slide, please. So it is my pleasure to introduce the Forbes consultants who will be working with you on the revenue cycle management as well as the physician practice management assessments. 
After their introductions, they will give you an overview of the RCM PPM assessments and discuss the data requests to really initiate this project. I'll now turn it over to Steve for his introduction and his team's introduction and to get us started. Thank you, Shannon, appreciate it. And thanks everybody for being here with us today. Uh, my name is Steve Smith. I'm a senior managing consultant with uh, now Forbis. You may have previously known us as BKD. Um, so if you hear uh, anyone, and, and honestly, probably primarily me, uh, still saying BKD, uh, my apologies in advance. It's, uh, we're getting there. Um, but uh, I do serve in the project management and relationship management role uh, for the firm as we get into our RCM and PPM uh, engagements, uh, assessments, as well as any of the ITA work, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Uh, that may uh, have an opportunity to come out of some of the assessment and some of the work that we'll be doing here over the next few months. Uh, do want to apologize in advance. I know I'm just in a polo here today. I feel super underdressed. Uh, we're at the National Rural Health Association's conference and uh, we're in the middle of some manual labor trying to put together an event for tonight. So uh, uh, number one, apologies for being underdressed. Number two, thank you for getting me out of a little bit of manual work for a while. Uh, the break is a, a nice welcome. Um, but uh, pleasure to, to meet everybody. I know I've seen some of your names already. Uh, really looking forward to working with everybody here in the coming months. I do wanna call out, we do have a couple changes. Uh, right now we have Isadora and Jen that are listed here. Uh, those two individuals are uh, going to be still involved, but not as much on the day-to-day -day operations of the assessments that we'll be doing. Uh, that'll instead be Diane Doolin on the physician practice side, uh, and then Noah Schrader on the revenue cycle management side. Uh, you'll see that we have Clay Morrison and Carson Cleveland listed there. Clay is going to be our point person and our lead for the RCM services, uh, with Carson taking point for PPM. Uh, so with that, I do want to give all the individuals a chance to introduce themselves and uh, give a little bit of their background. Uh, so let's go Clay, Carson, uh, Noah, and then Diane, please. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Steve, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, like Steve said, my name is Clay Morrison. Uh, I'm with four of us out of our Chicago office. I spend most of my time working on the front and back end of the revenue cycle. Um, but I'll be working with you all as far as it relates to data review, um, as well as the RCM portion. Uh, but it's really nice to meet everyone and looking forward to working with everyone. I apologize. I, I muted there for a second. Um, I'm Carson Cleveland. I have a dog that's going crazy in the background, so I do apologize if you hear that. But as Steve said, I'm, I'm going to be heading up the physician practice management with Diane. Um, my background is hospital system and clinic operations. And so we're just looking forward to meeting everyone and, and learning more about your organizations moving forward. And we may not have Noah with us here today. Uh, Diane, do you want to go ahead and, and go? Sure. Good morning, Diane Doolin. I'm a um, managing consultant with four of us, and I also have a very similar background to Carson. I um, uh, focus on inpatient case management, patient throughput, um, outpatient clinic practices, as well as um, labor. So I'm really excited to be part of this and looking forward to future conversations. I will be supporting Carson. Very good. So these are the, the names, faces, emails, phone numbers, and all the other stuff that you're gonna see. Uh, quite frequently here as we go, um, but I, I know I'll just speak for the rest of the team. We're all really excited to get these projects underway. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is just a little bit of an org chart related to Forbis and, and the, the various services that, that we perform as a practice. And, and our practice, just for a little bit of background, is our healthcare performance improvement practice. Um, my niche has been the uh, rural providers, uh, not just in the Delta Grant, but rural providers throughout the country. So we know there are certainly, you know, different issues that a rural provider is going to face than maybe an urban center provider or even a, an urban cluster provider. Um, so we, we do want to kind of specialize in that. So that's kind of where we're coming at it from. And, and again, I'm going to mention this and then we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail later. You can see the various services that are available here that we do as a firm. Um, a lot of these will cover some of the ITA requests that may or may not come through uh, as a result of the work that we'll be doing here over the coming months. So uh, I'll kind of bookmark that. Um, 
but if you ever want to go back and take a look at, well, what else, you know, do they focus on? Uh, this is a, a little bit of just background information for you there. Next slide, please. So the data requests. Um, we know that individuals have been getting emails uh, that have included the data requests and some sample schedules uh, to be completed and, and items like that. Um, and we really do need that information to be returned by September 30th. What I will say though, is if there are items that are on there that you know, hey, we're not gonna be able to get to this or we don't have that reporting capability, just let us know, indicate that to us so that we don't just have it as an outstanding data request in general. Um, now, it, you know, if it's a substantial amount of data that we can't get to, you know, we may need to have a, a call to talk about what we need to do to get to it. Uh, and, and the reason that I say that is we never want to go into one of these assessments in a blind state, meaning we don't have historical data to look at. We can't make any kind of uh, assumptions or conclusions based on, you know, data that, that kind of drives our interviews. So, you know, we want to make sure that we have a chance to review some of that stuff, get a sense of, you know, items we want to dive deeper on, questions we have around data, all those kinds of things. And, and quite frankly, we want to make sure we don't have any data concerns uh, in terms of invalid data or additional needs or stuff like that. Uh, we do have a little bit of a tight time frame that we work on with these projects since we want to make sure that we have everything that we need um, to make this a valuable uh, process for the hospitals and for the clinics that we're going to be working with. So again, you know, we've got the list of things that are included in that data request listed below there. If you have any questions about what we're asking for as you review the actual data request, please don't hesitate to reach out email us, call us, whatever you've got to do. Uh, we are more than happy to, to step away and uh, take a phone call so that you know that you're pulling the right data the first time and, and you're not having to, to duplicate efforts. Um, we do not, and, and I can't stress that enough, we do not want this to be an overburdensome list and an overburdensome request. We want to make sure that, you know, this is something your staff can, can get to. Um, and if there's trouble getting to it, we can talk about options. Um, you know, maybe do some screen shares, whatever we've got to do to make sure that we can get a substantial amount of data uh, so that we can calculate the KPIs you're going to need in our reports, as well as guide the interviews that we'll be having throughout the process. Next slide. The interview schedule. So you're going to get a schedule very similar to what this shows right here that breaks out the RCM and the PPM functions, who we're going to try to meet with, when we would like to meet with them, all those kinds of things. And for each of these, we're going to need to know the names of the individuals that are going to be involved, their contact information. Uh, Shannon and the center team will verify whether or not um, the organization would like just a bulk Zoom or Teams invitation that'll be good for the whole day that people will just dial into at their certain time, or if they would rather have individual meeting invites sent out. Uh, most that we've worked with over the last year have elected for the individual meetings, but we will be flexible. Whatever anybody wants, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, but we do need to make sure that we have names and emails and phone numbers would be good as well. Um, we know that things are crazy uh, anytime that you work in a rural hospital and you're getting pulled in 6,000 different directions. And so uh, if there's something that pulls you away and, and just lose track of time, we, we would like the ability to make sure that we can uh, track somebody down. and. and the other thing that I'll say very similar to the data request is this schedule is not something that is set in stone. If we need to adjust this, we adjust this. Um, we'll adjust times and, and all that kind of stuff. The, the days need to stay the same. The time frames in terms of the individual meeting schedule times need to stay relatively the same. Uh, but we do have flexibility in terms of who we talk to when, uh, who is involved, things of that nature. And I definitely want to call that out on the PPM side. You'll see that we're requesting time from multiple providers. We understand that the providers may or may not be able to step away. We do want to make sure that we have the chance to talk to at least one provider. Uh, and ideally, if you have a rural health clinic, we want to make sure that we have a chance to talk to that medical director. Uh, because we do want to make sure that we have a provider's sense of how the practice is functioning. Uh, are there issues with scheduling? Are there issues with uh, the EMR? Um, I can't imagine a physician would ever think that there's a problem with an EMR, but who knows? Maybe we'll find one. Um, you know, a lot of those things that, that we want to make sure that we can cover. But again, you know, we don't want to 
compromised schedules, compromised patient care, anything like that. So if there's times where, hey, provider unavailable at this time, just let us know. And then we can treat that as either a, a blank or an opportunity to slide a, another meeting into that spot, um, do additional data review on our end, whatever we have to do. Uh, if any edits are needed or requested on this, just please don't hesitate to reach out and make that request and we'll do everything we can to meet it. Next slide, please. As we get into the report presentation and action planning, um, you will have a copy of the draft report at least two weeks before the report presentation and action planning session takes place. That gives you some time to take a look at the report, uh, give it a once over, make sure you're in agreement with some of our observations, our findings. Uh, if there are any kind of material misstatements, we wanna know about those so we can get those stripped out and corrected before we finalize the report. Because ultimately, once we come in and do this report presentation and action planning, we're gonna turn around the final report within seven days uh, of the completion of our final action planning session. So there's really not a lot of time built in there just due to some of our QA processes internally that we have to go through uh, to get a final report out. We need to make sure if we're gonna have edits, they take place prior to our coming on site for that actual report presentation whenever possible. As we start to get into these actual days, it's gonna be split up into two days. Uh, first day is typically, um, and it seems to work out pretty well this way, first day with revenue cycle management, uh, second day with physician practice management. We can definitely split that up if we need to, um, or flip it, I should say, not split, not split it up. But if we need to make PPM the first day and RCM the second day, we can absolutely do that. Uh, so again, based on the schedule uh, of the folks in your organization, if we need to make that change, just let us know. Uh, but you've got the, the basic um, you know, outline of that day here, uh, where we start with the report presentation. And you know, there again, we're gonna be going through our report and really focusing on the recommendations that we have. And the reason that I say that is that's what's gonna be used in the late morning through the afternoon as we start getting into the action plans. For both RCM and PPM, each organization is going to be requested to complete three to four action plans based on either the recommendations that are in our report or other items that you're already working on internally and know that you want to have a part of, as a part of a formal action plan. And so through that process, we're going to identify the core issue, a goal statement, um, a physical goal to be completed, um, and then we're going to go through and assign actual action steps to each of those. And so we may have eight steps to resolve a given issue. Um, you know, some of the ones that we've seen in the past have been the formation of a denials management committee or implementing um, uh, provider documentation audits. Um, any number of different things can be a part of this action plan. And it's really what you, the organization, feel you're going to get the most benefit out of. That's a doable thing. We don't want it to be something that's gonna be so hard, there's a high likelihood that we're not gonna get this done or it's gonna take six years to get it done. We're really looking for those things that we can accomplish that are gonna have either financial or operational benefit to the organization in a you know, maybe one year to 18 month period um, so that we can actually measure those and, and, and keep track with the center. Um, as I mentioned, after we're done and through the action planning, uh, we'll get into the process of finalizing the report on our end and getting that issued back out to you. That final report will include all the slides that we had in our draft report, as well as copies in both Excel and PDF version of the um, action planning documents that we'll complete during the action planning process. Um, we'll go into a lot more detail uh, once we're, you know, going through that actual process, but there's a, a just kind of high level overview of what those days look like. Again, one day for RCM, one day for PPM. The other thing that I'll mention is PPM typically uh, is not quite as lengthy a process as what is shown here, uh, just because of the data that's covered. Um, that being said, that day is yours. I, I don't want to say, hey, you know, we got to be done by this time. Uh, we have this time blocked out. We want to make sure that this is a valuable exercise and not just something where we're checking a box. Uh, and it's something that's going to bring that value uh, to the organization once we're done. So 
Uh, I do want to call out there is a potential that PPM could finish, you know, earlier than what RCM may on day one, uh, but that that day is yours. So whatever time that you need, we're there to help. We're there to work with you. Uh, and we're going to devote as much time as, as we ultimately need to. Next slide, please. All right. Thank you so much, Steve. So as next steps, if you haven't already, we ask that you please forward your preferred RCM PPM interview dates to myself, Shannon, sorry, for October or November interviews. Your organization will need to, to reserve those two back-to-back -back days. As Steve indicated, <clears throat> excuse me, the RCM PPM data request and completed interview schedule is due to the Forbes consultants on or by Friday, September 30th for those interviews occurring in October. Some of you have started to see more and more communications coming from me to try to get those dates reserved if you haven't already reserved them, just because calendars fill up so quickly. You can also refer to those attachments that I have included in the Outlook invite from today and that Ms. Luttrell added into our chat box. Next slide, please. So following that revenue cycle and physician practice management report and action planning session, implementation technical assistance, our ITA projects, can be submitted directly to the center to support action plans that were created during these assessments. Some examples include, but are not limited to, clinic operational assessments. We've done a lot of CDM reviews, charge capture, pricing transparency, physician risk, as well as compensation assessments and really many more. We do try to customize these assessments to really fit your organization needs. So really you only have about a year and a half to really benefit from these ITA projects. Next slide, please. So here's just a slide where we're sharing technical assistance webinar trainings that you may like to share with your team to really build internal capacity that supports performance improvements and sustainability. Next slide, please. So we did wanna make sure to build in a lot of time for Q&A, but on behalf of the National Rural Health Resource Center and the four of us team, I'm just gonna speak for you as well. We really appreciate your attention today. Once again, we know you're extremely busy, so at times it can be hard to carve out the time. If you're not, it, or if you weren't on at the beginning of the webinar, once again, the attachments that were shared are included in the Outlook invite. And we hope that this helped clarify any questions or concerns that you had regarding the RCM and PPM projects. So with that being said, are there any questions or concerns that anyone has that they would like to address now? Please feel free to come off mute or you can add your questions or comments into the chat box. Shannon, this is Dallas County. We're just excited for the opportunity to look forward to it. So, Well, thank you so much. So do we. Well, if there's no questions or concerns, please next slide. So once again, thank you all who were able to participate today. Please contact the center directly with any questions or technical assistance needs. And on that note, I will give you all back about 35 minutes of your time and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thanks.